This is Twit. Uh, I've got three cool stories. Uh, we'll, we'll go through them really quick. The first one is the Odysseus moon probe, and it's going to make sense in a minute because, uh, you know, last week we were talking, all, or last episode we were talking all about uh, the Intuitive Machine's private um, uh, mission to the moon, the Odysseus spacecraft on the IM-1 mission. And um, unfortunately, uh, this week, the mission ended, uh, which we expected. It wasn't supposed to last more than about a week on the surface. But the big twist is that when they landed on the moon, it didn't actually uh, set down easily. It broke a leg, uh, which is why it, it tipped and fell over on the lunar surface. Uh, and, you know, despite that, NASA and Intuitive Machines are calling it a, a success. And that's because uh, the spacecraft itself is about 14 feet tall, uh, if memory serves, uh, managed to make the first soft landing of a, a private company ever. The first soft landing at the South Pole of the moon. It was the first a successful landing uh, of it, in, in a way, uh, of the commercial lunar payload services mission, NASA's CLIPS program. Uh, and not only did it tip over, and break that leg, but it took pictures from the lunar surface. It beamed back data uh, of from the, the payloads that were on board and everything. I mean, basically everything worked except it broke the leg and, 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 and fell on over, which was really exciting to see. And in the, its last photo before it went uh, silent this week was uh, of the, uh, the Crescent Earth looking at its home, which is very, very sad uh, to, see, uh, to see it go. There is hope, though that after uh, the 14 day lunar night that is now kind of blanketing the area uh, that Odysseus spacecraft, it might actually uh, wake back up and phone home again. We saw it happen with Japan's slim moon lander. And so uh, it could act in fact happen with this, the slim moon lander, by the way, also uh, shut back down again uh, in the lunar night. Uh, so we'll have to see how that one does, but very exciting to see. Uh, the the final kind of sunset of this of this mission, especially after it broke its leg, and uh, we can't wait to see the next one. By the way, they call it Odie now for short instead of Odysseus, uh, which is an interesting twist. Um, that was from Space.com. In fact, all of these stories I think that I picked are from Space.com. I might be a little bit biased, of course. Um, the the uh, second one I've got here is a, a bit of a more of a concern. It's uh, an air leak on the International Space Station. And this actually came uh, uh, earlier this week in a NASA press conference. NASA's uh, Joel Montalbano, the uh, space station program uh, manager, uh, said that the there is a, a small but increasing leak coming out of the aft end of the service module section, a uh, service section of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. Uh, it's not strong enough or powerful enough to be a threat to the crew right now. There's uh, seven people on board the space station uh, currently, uh, but it is something that they're trying to pin down. They've traced the lake to somewhere in the vicinity of where the, 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 the aft end, where the docking port is. That's where the Russian progress vehicles uh, park themselves autonomously uh, there. And there's like a three foot section that they think the leak is in and they're going to have to figure out where that is and then patch it up uh, to try to stop that in the future. It's always a little bit disconcerting when you have these kind of air leaks because the astronauts need that to survive. Uh, but the space station is 20 plus years old. So it has shown these types of leaks and these types of um, growing pains in the past. Um, actually, more recently, maybe more famously, there was a, a Soyuz uh, leak uh, in a hole in a spacecraft uh, that uh, required the replacement of that vehicle at the station. They can't really replace the service module, uh, but Montalbano uh, of NASA said that they, they're not worried for the crew yet, uh, and it's not at that point. So they're going to keep tracking it down, try to isolate it, and hopefully repair it uh, over time. And that's great because going into our third story uh, is uh, that next crew. The reason that Joel Montalbano uh, was talking about this leak is because he was talking about how ready the space station is for its next crew. And our final story is that SpaceX is getting ready to launch their first astronaut mission of the year of 2024. And that mission is the Crew 8 uh, expedition to the International Space Station. This is a mission that will send four astronauts on the Crew Dragon Endeavor. This is SpaceX's most flown Dragon spacecraft, making its fifth flight, which is, I believe, what the, the vehicles themselves were uh, approved for or rated for basically five flights and they'd be done. But NASA is now looking to maybe even extend that to 15 
flights with SpaceX to get more use out of these. And this Crew-8 mission is kind of an interesting one because it's launching three rookie astronauts and then one big veteran. And uh, and the, the, the astronaut crew is, um, uh, I believe it's NASA astronaut uh, uh, Matthew Dominic. Uh, he's the commander and it's his first time ever flying. Uh, the pilot is Michael Barrett, a, a physician uh, and NASA flight surgeon turned astronaut who actually has flown a, a couple of times before, one on a shuttle mission and one on a long duration mission to the space station. And he's the pilot and the sole veteran of the flight. Uh, and rounding out the crew was another NASA astronaut, Jeanette Epps, uh, making her first flight. She was actually supposed to fly on a Boeing Starliner uh, way back when. And then they uh, they reassigned her to SpaceX when uh, clearly we've seen that Starliners have been delayed uh, for quite some time, maybe April 22nd, they actually packed the Starliner vehicle up f with cargo. So uh, we can, Rod and I can talk about that when he's back. And uh, finally, Russian cosmonaut Alexander Grabenkin, another first time flyer uh, and, and former uh, Russian military pilot. So they're going to spend uh, about six months on the space station, but their mission has already been delayed. We talked about the Odysseus Moonlander earlier. Uh, this Crew-8 mission was supposed to launch on the 22nd of February. They delayed it to the 28th and then to March 1st because SpaceX had to launch that uh, Odysseus Moonlander from the same pad, Pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center on February 18th. That mission went fine, but now they're facing weather concerns and NASA is looking at launching it on March 2nd uh, for um, at like 11 o'clock at night. So it'll be a Saturday night fever in space for, for SpaceX and NASA if they can get this off the ground. But uh, it's not looking good. Weather is 40% go. So if, if not, they'll try uh, for Sunday uh, and then make sure that they fly uh, in good time. Hey, if you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out This Week in Space. You can find us on your favorite podcast app or see the link in the description below. See you there. <laughs>